Hi, I'm Joe Chur and welcome to another great 630 Naperville. On this program, we're talking about the many benefits of fitness in the workplace, the future of the trades, and we have the honor of meeting a local artist making a big impact. But first, we're getting tips on how to handle that pesky low back pain so many of us struggle with. I'm happy to welcome Dr. Khan, a neurosurgeon at Edward Elmhurst Medical Group to 630 Naperville. Thanks for joining us today, Doctor. Thank you for having me. Now, there isn't a person that I know that doesn't suffer in some way from back pain. What are some symptoms and why is that? Back pain is one of the number one disabilities that's out there, and it's the one, number one leading cause of loss of work time, right? And so I think there's a lot of reasons you can have uh, back pain. Uh, number one, first and foremost, is probably overexerting yourself, right? Overdoing it a little bit and having isolated back pain or burning sensation in your low back. And that can be due to overexerting in such a way that you cause muscle strain or ligament strain. There's other causes of back pain, whether that's due to arthritis, degenerative disease of the spine, and that can present as back pain as well, or even worsening, it can present as symptoms down the legs, like numbness and tingling. And that's something that you should look into seeing or getting better care, getting closer attention with medical. Now, you mentioned overdoing it, but is underdoing it also an issue, especially now that we're on Zoom meetings all day behind our computers, we're not, definitely not as active in an office environment. Yeah, that definitely plays a factor. I think that's a great comment that you make because when you do have patients that are not doing as much a sedentary lifestyle, right? You're not working out low, low I would say low risk aerobic activity, right? Um, that can be beneficial for you, but if you're not as toned in your low back musculature, which helps to support your spine and your core isn't strong enough, that can also be a cause. So you kind of have to find the happy medium. So say you, you are suffering from back pain at home, are there some remedies you can do and how do you know when it's to the level where you have to go in and see a doctor? Those are great questions. So I think number one, you have to realize that anytime you have back pain, you can always try to alleviate some of it with conservative measures. And that can be your over-the-counter non-steroidals, right? Anti-inflammatories like Advil, Aleve, taking those medications and taking some rest, right? Taking it easy for a little bit, especially if you've been overdoing it and seeing if the symptoms improve. But obviously, if in a short period of time, approximately four to six weeks of conservative management with medications and rest, you see that the back pain's getting worse, or God forbid you're having symptoms down your legs, it's probably imperative that you seek medical attention at that point in time. Got it, that makes a lot of sense. So I, I also know that back pain, even drastic back pain, can be caused by someone falling and they might get a compression fracture. Walk me through that and how is that different from a muscular issue? Yeah, traumatic back pain due to a fall can be back pain that is present at all times, right? Muscular back pain usually will improve as you go through your day, right? As you start to get going and you start to get increased blood flow, you'll start to notice that that back pain may ease up a little bit because the inflammation in the muscles is re resolving. As far as compression fractures though, that fracture is the cause of pain. And as you move and as you get going, that may get worse because of the fracture. And so it's important that if you do have a traumatic injury to your back and you are concerned about a trauma to the back, that that pain warrants uh, attention with a medical professional. Got it, that makes sense. What are things people can do today, listening to this, young or old, to prevent back pain from occurring? Yeah, that's a great question. I think we're starting to do more and more when it relates to core strengthening, right? I think more and more people are getting out there and doing exercises like low weight uh, aerobic activity, yoga, Pilates, other measures like that that help to strengthen the low back musculature and support your spine. Right? The spine is constituent of ligaments, bone, and muscle. And if you can strengthen the muscle to help support the bone and the ligaments, then you can hopefully mitigate the back pain. And so doing some aerobic activity, light aerobic activity, yoga, those all can be beneficial to minimize your back pain. So when it comes to weightlifting or kind of building that bone density up, what's the recommended prescription for people? Like, do they want to do it two, three times a week for how long? And what should 
what should they be focused on? Yeah, I think a better question to be suited for the therapists out there, but I think I won't try to overstep my bounds, but I think light activity 20 minutes a day, two to three times a week is appropriate. I think that that helps to build strength in the low back. As far as bone density, the best thing you can do is vitamin supplementation with calcium and vitamin D. Getting outside in the sun is a good vitamin D supplement, so that's a good way of doing it. Uh, getting outside for good walks, that would be beneficial for you. Uh, but I think those things are good early measures in minimizing back pain. Got it, that makes sense. We, you talked about calcium. I know there's many people out there that that aren't getting dairy in the usual ways, like, like through milk. What are yeah. other ways for someone to get calcium in their diet without milk? Yeah, I think vitamin supplementation is probably the best way to do it. I mean, there's so much literature out there now on vitamin supplementation, multivitamins, and the formularies have become really good that I think you can supplement via that route, especially like you say, or as you're alluding to with all the people taking oat milk, almond milk, mm -hmm. all these other measures that may not have as much calcium as regular dairy products. I only asked that because my mother-in-law, just the other day, she was, she was riding me. She's like, you're not drinking milk. What about your calcium levels? And I'm like, I'm getting enough calcium. I'll be fine. It was, it was pretty funny. She might add milk to your dead nightly yeah, regimen. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, hey, thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Khan. Really appreciate it. I appreciate this. Thank you very much. After the break, we're headed to Beyond Measure to learn a few exercises to squeeze into your workday. Stay with us. We were there when your kid discovered poison ivy. Now remember, leaves of three. Let it be. We were there for that, and we're here for everything else. Here, it's personal, because we get to know you. People from Chicago pull for Chicago. We root for his teams, celebrate his successes, push through his challenges. When people call us the second city, it's misleading. We're second to none. We're hardworking, resilient, but we have a good time. When you live in Chicago, you proudly call this home. Your bank should too. We're Wintrust, built here, for here. And we've taken our place at Chicago's bank because no other bank can say the same. Welcome back to 630 Naperville. Up next, we're headed to Beyond Measure Fitness with Kaylin Rizwald to talk about how healthy employees lead to healthier businesses. Welcome to Business Forward. I'm Kaylin Risbold, President and CEO of the Naperville Area Chamber of Commerce. I'm here at Chamber Member Beyond Measure Fitness Training to learn a little bit more about how fitness and exercise can play into the role and the lives of the busy professionals. I'm here with owner operator Steve Lavick to learn a little bit more about that. And let's dive right in. Does fitness impact people's performance? Yeah, I think it's a great question. And I think the right away people go into, okay, how is having a six pack or a better bench press gonna help me with business? And the answer is it's really not, right? So uh, for me, I think right away of things that do make a positive impact as a business person. And so uh, as business people, our greatest asset is being productive. And so to be productive, we need to have energy. We need to be mentally sharp. Uh, we also need to maintain a positive mindset, right? And so exercise is proven to help benefit benefit you in those areas. Uh, but then also we need to avoid certain things, right? So uh, stress, anxiety, high pressure, it's just bound to happen. And when you're a part of an exercise routine, it's something that can help combat those things as well. So two great ways that you can, uh, you know, see the benefits from an exercise routine as a business person, for sure. And I see the benefits, but there are also a lot of really big common misconceptions out there about exercise and routines. What do you hear? For sure. Uh, the, the first one is that I can't get quick results. And, you know, if you're trying to lose weight or burn fat and get stronger, yes, those things absolutely take time. But with the things that I was just alluding to, uh, the positive mindset, the energy, um, all those things, those things happen right away, immediately, right after, even during your workout, you're going to start to feel the benefits. So that's something that I suggest that you start right away. Um, and then another one is time. So uh, most people will say, I just don't have the time to do it. Honestly, nobody has time. No one has more than 168 hours a week, right? We have to make time for it. And so uh, I can touch on that in a little bit. Um, the third one is uh, working yourself so hard that you can't move, right? Crushing yourself in the gym not true at all. Honestly, we tell people when you're first getting started, literally go through the motions. Less is more. Just being consistent over time trumps intensity no matter what. 
Uh, and then the last one I have is motivation. Most people think they have to be motivated to get started. And I, if I'm being honest, most of my, our members here, including myself, are probably motivated maybe five to 10% of the time, if I'm being perfectly honest. So uh, you, you really just have to get started, then motivation comes after that. So uh, I think that's important to understand because if you're waiting to get motivated, you're gonna be waiting for a very long time, if, it, if at all, I, it may not ever happen for you. So I've been waiting for a few years. Um, I don't have that motivation. And I think it's exactly what you said, time, um, the enormity of it, and, and not being scared, but not knowing what to do. What are three things myself or other busy professionals can do to just get started? For sure, yeah, the simpler the better. Uh, honestly, no matter if you're getting started or if you've been doing it for years, the simpler you can keep things, the odds of you staying consistent are way higher. So the first thing is going for a walk. Uh, it's the easiest thing that you can do. You don't have to think about it. I think the best time that we can do that is at lunchtime to avoid that you know, midday crash. Uh, it's gonna re-energize you. You're gonna feel good and productive going into the second half of the day. Uh, and then there are two other ones that uh, don't require any equipment at all. And, and actually these are a double positive because one of the big things that take people out of work using their sick leave is actually low back pain uh, rather than actually being sick. So these exercises actually uh, will give you more energy but then also help prevent uh, low back pain as well, which are two positive things here. So if you're open to it, uh, I'd love to have you give these a shot and uh, go for it. What do you think? You said it was easy and for everybody, so I'm going to attempt to demonstrate that. All right, so now that we're on the ground, the first thing that we're gonna do is very, very simple. It's just a regular plank, and this is, uh, again, this is a very common exercise, uh, but there's a couple key components that I want you to pay attention to when you do this in order to protect the low back and also engage the core a little bit more, okay? So all I'm gonna have you do is actually start on your hands. The key here is actually with your low back, we wanna make sure that your hips are tucked underneath you. So what I want you to think about if you had a belt buckle on, I want you to try to imagine like you're trying to tilt that belt buckle up so that it's facing your eyes. Once you've done that, then you're gonna lift your knees up off the ground. So let's give that a shot. And when you do this guys, all you need to do is 10 to 15 seconds. Uh, another thing that people do is they just keep adding time to the plank, not necessary at all. 10 to 15 seconds is all. And this helps the core? This helps, yep, anterior core here. Yep. For people who are doing this. For people who are doing okay. this, yep, you got it. So. So, yep, hands right there, belt buckles where up. Where's my feet? Now, th that's the a wide. great question. So the wider your feet are, the more support you're gonna get, okay? The, the closer your feet are, the harder this is gonna be, yeah? Okay. So that position looks pretty good. You'll just wanna lift your hips up a little bit higher. Right about there, there we go. And okay. so that's the high plank, okay? The next one that I'm gonna show you is gonna be down on the ground. And uh, with this one, it's also a core exercise, but also a glute exercise, okay? okay. So uh, now this lateral core actually inserts into your low back, all right? So that's why it's gonna help provide support for the low back, as well as help build the glute muscle up a little bit, which provides support for the low back as well. So all you're gonna do is start off on the ground with your feet, kind of flex back behind you like so. And all you're gonna do is push your knees into the ground, drive your hips up and forward, and then return them down and back. So hips go up and forward, down and back like so. Typically, if you're gonna do these, I would do about 10 in a row and then switch. So give it a and, shot. Well, this is nice because people can do these exercises anywhere. You just need space. Yep, you don't need anything at all. Yeah, okay. you can do what it outside. What do I do with my other arm? Uh, wherever is comfortable. Yep, just right at your side. And then what am I doing? Good, and then hips go right back down. So good, and then let's try that again. And now when you come up, think about your belt buckle again, yeah. pushing that belt buckle up and forward so that your shoulders, hips, knees are in line. And then on the way down, it goes back again. Okay. Yep, just like so. And it's almost like a sit up or is it like you wanna stay there? Yep, so brief pause and then right back down. Yep, so we're not holding this one. That's a great question. We're gonna actually repeat this one for, for reps anywhere from five to 10 if you're just getting started with it would be good. Uh, you know, typically I like to say once you get to a 50, 50 to 70% intensity level, whatever rep that is, you're good there, so. Well, this has been really educational and I think it's a great tie, again, back to business of how doing some simple things and thank you for the tips can really help as we continue to be productive. So absolutely um, appreciate the tips. And again, we're here at Beyond Measure Fitness Training in Naperville and we'll see you next time on Business Forward. Welcome back. I'm Joe Chura, and this is 630 Naperville. I'm joined now by Karen, Executive Director of Power for DuPage, mm -hmm. and TJ, the DuPage County JATC Training Director.
Great to have both of you here today. Thank Thanks you. So TJ, I have a question for you. What is JATC? So JATC is Joint Apprenticeship Training Committee. Uh, there's two entities that make that up. There's the IBEW, which is International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, and that's the electrical union that represents our members, and then the National Electrical Contractors Association. So those are the group of contractors that hire our apprentices to go out to work. Got it, that mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So mm -hmm. trades today, they're in such high demand. I don't go, a day doesn't seem to go past without someone saying, like they can't get a hold of someone or they're so booked up. And it just creates this question for me of like, so much opportunity, there's yeah. more, more demand than tradespeople, it feels. What are the opportunities for young people in today's work environment to really think about trades? Mm -hmm. There's so many, uh, but start like, it's the Earn While You Learn program that we've, uh, I think, perfected in the building trades. So uh, you're gonna go to school, you're going to earn money while you're going to school, you're working in the field. It's, it's very practical for anybody that's hands-on and they are tangible, they wanna see the completion of a project and the energy that they've put into something, the building trades are excellent for somebody with that type of drive or want. Mm -hmm. And the pride. We always talk about the pride Absolutely. piece. When, when they are in the program, that's what I hear on my end is that they're very proud that they're part of something that they can see what they've built or that they were a part of building. So yeah. that's a huge piece. Yeah, definitely. So what role does the JATC play in the development of these mm -hmm. folks? Mm -hmm. Um, we really kind of handle everything. So after you make it through the application process uh, and then you get into the program, we find you your job, we put you to work. Uh, our, your school is done through our, us as well. So we really try to handle everything. Our main focus is to bring talent into the building trade, somebody that's interested. You do not need any prior experience in this. Uh, we're there to train you. So what we try to do is handle everything for you so you can hyper-focus on school, which is 180 hours a year. It's a rigorous schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you're also working full-time for a contractor while you're going to school. So you're able to go to work, you're able to focus solely on your job, the task at hand, learning from the journey people that you're working with, learning the projects and how a construction project unfolds and working with other building trades and how that, that unfolds. And then you're also working inside of the school with all of your instructors are people that are currently working in the field. So you're getting that mentorship on the job and while you're in the school. The, the entire time, you're just working with somebody that's extremely knowledgeable in the trade and very passionate about teaching. Mm -hmm. How many years do you have to go to school? So we have two different programs right now. Uh, we have a low voltage program, which is gonna be a four year obligation. And then we have an inside, which is commercial industrial electricians. That's a five year program. Got it, that makes sense. And then people that graduate from these programs, what do you, what are you seeing the opportunity as far as their, their income in comparison to someone else getting out of college? How does that stack up? It's, it's immeasurable because you're, you're graduating this program with zero debt. If you wanted to continue on with college, we're part of ACE, which is American Council on Education. We have an articulation agreement with College of DuPage. You can finish up your bachelor's in applied science there. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a lot there on the education side you can continue on with. And then coming through the trades, again, you're completing the program, you have zero debt. People are graduating our program and they're already starting their lives. They're buying their first houses. They have uh, their cars, uh, transportation. They are saving for their future. You have four retirement plans. You have full family health care coverage. Um, you're beginning your life with not only are you at zero debt, you're five years ahead of anybody else that's going to school. So. Uh, it's a, great, it's a great step forward. It really is. We really. have a lot of people and we're their second uh, mm -hmm. try at, at that kind of adult lifestyle. So yeah. they've gone through four years of, of college. They've already amounted the debt and now they're coming to the program. And everything I hear is, why didn't I start this sooner? Why didn't I start mm -hmm. this sooner? Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's a common theme that you have with building trades. Yeah, it seems like such a springboard for life versus being in the hole with debt and exactly. now you're trying to find a job and now you're stress of your job and you have to leave your job for a higher paying job, you can just work and, and you don't have that, that worry. Right. Yeah. And you also have a skill set, right? So um, you're able to go home and work on your own house. And if that's something that you find interesting, um, my wife and I were on our fifth house. So you can go in, you can fix up your house, you can sell that, and then you're just putting sweat equity into that, right? So yeah. then you move to the next one and you just keep jumping and springboarding that way as well. Yeah. So there's a personal investment that you get out of it, it makes as well. so much so much sense. Yeah. Yeah. And Karen, you're with Power Forward DuPage. Yes. What role do you play in this? Short answer is um, basically what I do is a lot of marketing and community outreach. I um, 
Power Forward to Page, I should say, represents the best and the brightest electrical talent in the county. Um, and how do we do that? We do that by representing about 350 highly skilled and trained electrical contractors and about 1,500 union electricians through the IBEW. That's fantastic. Yep. And you have an event coming up. Tell us we more do. about that. We do. We do. So to piggyback off of what TJ's been saying about encouraging um, um, kids to get into the trades, we developed a program. It's the DuPage County Trade Apprenticeship Expo. We started it in 2018. Super excited that it's back after COVID. And at this event, we have 16 different construction trade organizations gathered um, at the IBEW Union Hall for the public to come in, for students to come in, teachers, parents, interested residents, and they can visit all different trade organizations and learn what they're about. At the same time, learn what that apprenticeship training program is all about. So, you know, if I go into um, the electrical fields, you know, what can I be? Well, you can be X, Y, Z. People, people get that tunnel vision and think that it's just this when they come to an expo or a career fair, they learn that there are so many different positions in that field, right? Mm -hmm. We think it's just one thing. I'm going to be an electrician. I'm going to be a carpenter. Well, they can actually be an electrical contractor. They can you know, own their own business, you know, and they get all that information at events such as this. So we're excited to be um, part of it um, and host it and um, you know, bring it to the res residents of the county. Yeah, it's, a, it's incredible and it seems like a no-brainer. I would encourage parents out there to really look into this for their kids and students. You know, there's, there's something to be said about, about these fields and the, re and the reward that you get from actually touching mm -hmm. something tangible and getting out of a computer yeah. Um, I, I think it's all fantastic. Thank you yeah. so much for being here and You're for welcome. advocating for these essential jobs. Thank Absolutely. you. Thanks for having us. So stay with us. After the break, we are meeting a local author and artist who is leaving a really big mark in the community. People from Chicago pull for Chicago. We root for its teams, celebrate its successes, push through its challenges. When people call us the second city, it's misleading. We're second to none. We're hardworking, resilient, but we have a good time. When you live in Chicago, you proudly call this home. Your bank should too. We're Wintrust, built here, for here. And we've taken our place at Chicago's bank because no other bank can say the same. Stay in the know, at home, or on the go with NCTV 17 News Update. This quick recap of everything happening in and around town will be delivered straight to your email inbox for free. Sign up today. Hi, I'm Joe Chur and you're watching 630 Naperville. I'm joined now by local author and artist Rich Lowe. He's here to talk about both his activism and artwork. Welcome to the show, Rich. Thank you, Joe. It's nice to be here. So let's kick this off by telling us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I grew up in the Chicago Chinatown, um, a neighborhood full of restaurants, shops, and most importantly, maintained its culture and traditions. Um, then I went away for college where I found myself uh, to be an artist and also to learn about American life outside of an isolated neighborhood. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you for sharing that, that too. I'm sure there's a lot in your history that we can deep dive with, yeah, deep dive you. into, but what's essentially something that's inspiring you today? What inspires me today is that um, now I have a voice to tell stories about Chinese Americans and their important contribution to our great country. And because I've ownership to the artwork, I would have that freedom. So you're also an award-winning author and illustrator. Yes. How does one get into something like that? Um, luck has something to do with that. Um, I was contacted by a, a literary agent working out in New York. Uh, her name's Anna Oswanger. Um, she held my hand and we developed a book called Father Chinese Opera. Um, the book, is loosely based on my childhood experience in Hong Kong, where my father was a band leader, 
and a composer for the Chinese opera. We developed the book and was published by Sky Pony Press 2014. We won the Asian Pacific American Literature Award is honor book. That's incredible. You also recently completed a mural, I heard, at the Chinese American Museum, and it's called Chinese Opera. Yes. What was the significance of that to you? The significance of Chinese Opera is that it's culturally relevant to the neighborhood, and every Chinese recognize the images. And it's also an experience that I had never had before. Uh, painting in public, and also um, locals, tourists, friends, stop by every single day to ask questions, to review the mural, and for photo ops. What's something that you would say to a listener if they wanted to get in this line of work? If they wanted to be an artist, illustrator, author, What's a piece of advice that you could give them? Hard work. Hard work, there's nothing replace hard work. Um, everything needs to be developed. Everybody have talent. It needs to be developed and needs to be developed in a proper way. And just knowing your background a little bit, it seems like you also say yes to things that you may not be well equipped for necessarily, yeah. but you say yes and you go for it anyway. My uh, fear for failure in life um, makes me want to try everything. I, I think um, my personality is that I go for it. And I like living on the edge where you can fail or succeed. So you also live in Naperville now. What's the significance of Naperville and why did you choose to call it home? Uh, we moved here in 1991. And uh, at that time, Naperville was considered one of the best cities to live. Uh, we loved the wonderful neighborhoods and the schools and its parks. Um, I, my studio downtown Chicago I had a fire and I moved back to Naperville to work and I'm rediscovering Naperville. It's safe, it's quiet, and I ride my bike in the nature trail by the house I think it's a wonderful place. And is it a welcoming place for artists? I didn't know this that in the beginning because I worked downtown. Mm -hmm. But since moving back, I joined the Naperville Art League. And, and I also was part of a program in Naperville Settlement called Me Equal We. And then I, you know, I look into uh, some of the other programs they have here. I think uh, it's definitely welcoming to the, to the artists and vendors from all over. Well, thank you so much for being here, Rich. I can't wait to keep following your work. It's fantastic. And I'm excited to see what you do next. Well, thank you very much for having me, Joe. It's glad to be here. Next up, producer Kevin Maychuk is back with another Naperville gem. This one focuses on Naperville's love of sports, which is evident both on the fields and in the stands. Playing sports has many benefits, particularly for young kids and teens during their development. Not only do sports keep kids active and healthy, they also teach teamwork, commitment, and problem-solving skills, while boosting self-esteem and reducing stress. For these reasons, it's no wonder that sports are very prominent in Naperville and a gem cherished by so many athletes and spectators alike. You can see it on the fields and in the stands. From youth sports, to high school athletics, to college competitions, local athletes of all ages love to challenge their rivals and themselves, pushing their own limits to achieve athletic greatness. And it pays off, as our many talented teams make headlines year after year, bringing home regional, state, and even national titles across a variety of sports, making their hometown proud. The city's many parks, fields, and facilities make it possible for these athletes to train and practice 
but also serve as places for the general public to come together to enjoy a game as well. Our town also embraces community sports as a way to have fun and foster camaraderie. The sheer abundance of athletic activities throughout our city truly shines, and that's why it makes our list of Naperville Gems. I truly admire the spirit of our local athletes and know that they are able to compete at that level because of all the support they receive both on and off the field. That's going to do it for us on this edition of 630 Naperville. Remember, if you think you can do more, you can. I'm Joe Chura, and I'll see you next time.